Okay, now let's go over some more vulnerabilities on our different types of vulnerability section. So here we're gonna go over cryptographic vulnerabilities. So what we're talking about here is that when we apply encryption or we have cryptographic algorithms and systems in place on our enterprise, on our network, we wanna make sure that we're using not exploitable or vulnerable encryption. So there's a couple examples of this. One common example is when you're doing like HTTPS, you want to make sure that your TLS cipher suite for one matches and is compatible from client to server. So from you, your web browser to web server, and then two, that you're not using exploited or vulnerable cipher suites. So just an example example would be like using RC4 in your TLS encryption or not using TLS 1.2 or 1.3, which is the current standard, right? The most secure TLS encryption you can use. So if you're using SSL 2.0 or 3.0 or TLS 1.0, that is insecure. So common issues we're going to have with our cryptographic vulnerabilities is, of course, utilizing weak encryption algorithms, improper key management. So maybe you're exposing your private keys and you don't know. And then this can lead to data exposure and, of course, system compromise. So an example of this, if you use MD5 for hashing, which is a cryptographic algorithm for hashing, that ain't going to work, right? Because those are vulnerable to collisions, okay? Where you create the same message digest from different input. Misconfiguration vulnerabilities. So this is the incorrect setup or lack of security controls in a system. So how can you misconfigure something? Well, during the process of deploying a web server or web service, we could just be worried about the availability, right? Getting it up, getting it working, making sure users can log in, use these features. Well, one thing we may not account for is if we don't change default credentials. If during the deployment of that application, that feature, that service on our enterprise, unnecessary services were enabled. This sometimes happens with like Windows Server, right? And then inadequate access controls. Maybe we don't have proper IAM established on any of our servers, or anything critical in our infrastructure. So what we can do to mitigate that, right, is make sure that we, what, harden our devices, make sure we have good access control schemes, and make sure that some things may not be available on the internet. So like this one right here, an unsecured database accessible over the internet, that's where we don't decouple our database from our back end and leave it exposed to the front end users to interact with through HTTP requests instead of like developing an API endpoint for our database. So mobile device vulnerabilities. So mobile device platforms, something that's kind of hard for us to manage, right? Because it's in the name, it's mobile. We want to make sure that if we have a mobile fleet, we want to install M some sort of MDM solution that's going to provide us with remote wipe capabilities. It's going to allow us to install a profile on that device that maybe does some basic hardening that's going to allow us to containerize our enterprise information, especially if we're doing like a BYOD deployment. We want to make sure that we're only allowing applications to be installed from trusted sources. Another big one, make sure you have full disk encryption, okay? So by Apple phones do this by default. They're fully encrypted until you put in that passcode, okay? Another one that's sometimes forgotten is screen timers, screen lock timer. If someone were to steal your phone, and you leave your phone open, not locked for five minutes, you know, it's a setting you can change. Maybe then they can go through, they know your pin maybe, and they can 
steal information, right? Or if they don't know your pin to change it, they can steal information in, during that time. Also, during Android or Android phones, have something called Security Enhanced Android, which allows you to apply policies kind of similar to like group policies. Some things that we're going to talk about that are on the Security Plus exam objectives is sideloading and jailbreaking. So we want to install apps from only official sources, which is by default what? The Apple's, the App Store, right, for Apple, and then the Google Play Store for Android. So already by default, you can't just deploy an app to the App Store unless it's trusted by Apple or Google, right? There's already some uh, security there. However, you can take it a step further and deploy your own third-party app store to your laptops, to actually anything in your enterprise, and you say, hey, here's the software center where you can install apps that only we approve, okay? But what you want to be weary of is something called sideloading. This is where we can install apps from unofficial sources. We could do this with over the air, so we can install apps like through Bluetooth or through NFC technologies. We also want to be aware of jailbreaking, making sure that we don't have users with jailbroken phones that are uh, connecting to our enterprise and getting access to our enterprise resources. Zero day vulnerabilities. So the definition is just a vulnerability that's not known, i.e. that if this malware or whatever this exploit is attacks the Windows 11 operating system and Windows doesn't have a patch for it, it's a zero day. That's all that means. There's no direct mitigation. There's no existing patch for it. This is often discovered by attackers and used for targeted attacks. So what we mean by there when it's often discovered by attackers is that if we're doing some sort of threat hunting or other hackers are in our systems, they'll discover it first. Or we discover it just by doing some basic scanning and logging and noticing things that maybe are a deviating from our pattern of behavior, our behavior analysis. And then we look into it, we may see something happening like data exfiltration with malware that we don't have a signature for. And then all of a sudden, well, we have a zero day exploit. So a zero day exploit can be used in a widespread ransomware campaign before vendors release a patch. Once that zero day is discovered, like log J4 guys was, it's kind of funny because like all vulnerabilities were someday zero day, right? If you really think about it. Um, like log J4, when that came out, there is a patch very quick, made because it was a CVSS score of 10. So once a zero day gets discovered, vendors typically try to release a patch as soon as possible, especially if it's uh, the severity is very high, like it's a CVSS score of 10. Okay, let's go ahead and do our quiz. So this quiz is going to be going over cryptographic vulnerabilities, misconfiguration, zero day, and mobile device exploits and vulnerabilities. So question one, in the context of enterprise security, what does misconfiguration typically refer to and why is it a concern? So we're gonna go with B, the incorrect or suboptimal settings in software or hardware, potentially exposing the system to security vulnerabilities. Question two, what is the significance of a zero day vulnerability in the context of enterprise security. So A, refers to a vulnerability that has been known. That's definitely not it, so we can cross that out. It is a vulnerability that is unknown to the software vendor and has no available patch. Probably that's going to be our answer, but let's check out C and D. It is a flaw that exists in hardware only. That's not true. It is a vulnerability that takes zero days to exploit. That's actually a very clever answer, but that is not true either. It's going to be B, a vulnerability that is unknown to the software vendor. All right, question three. What is the main purpose of using cryptographic techniques in securing enterprise data? Let's see here. So A, to ensure that data is only accessible to unauthorized users. Kind of tricky there. Like that's, we, I don't think you ever want that. C, to increase the size of the data to make it harder for attackers to download? Nope. To monitor who's accessing data? No, that wouldn't be specifically cryptographic, right? 
So we're gonna go with B, to convert data into a format that is unreadable to everyone except those possessing a specific key. All right, awesome. Question four, what is the primary security concern with allowing mobile device users to sideload apps in an enterprise environment? A, consumes more data. No, we're not technically worried about that, the data consumption. It allows the installation of apps from sources other than the official app store, potentially introducing malicious software. More than likely going to be our answer. C, it makes the device run slower. That could be a, a symptom of that, right? But that's not like the primary security concern. And then D, it automatically updates all apps on the device, consuming bandwidth. No, that typically doesn't happen. Maybe that could be a symptom, but B is going to be our answer. So uh, it allows insulation from untrusted sources. Then last question, question five. Why is jailbreaking a mobile device considered a security risk in an enterprise environment? It increases device performance and battery life? No. It allows the user to install custom software, potentially bypassing security. So it's probably going to be B. C, it locks the device? No, it does not. And D, it encrypts all data on the device, making it inaccessible? No, that sounds like ransomware to me, but that's not what happens. It's going to be B. It allows the user to install custom software, potentially bypassing the security restrictions set by the device manufacturer. Awesome.